go. Okay, we'll see if anybody's here. Well, it's early yet. It's only 5.30. It's ju just turned 5.30. Yeah, it's just turned 5.30. We're on 30. time. We're on time. High five. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> We're on time. We're that's, on time. That's a big deal for me because I'm like, that's a problem with me. I am not on time. <laughs> Too good. A lot of the times. But anyway, uh, I think I have kind of a fun video for you today. And if you're tuning in to Be Sue, that's me, uh, for the first time, maybe you're just kind of browsing through, scrolling through, and you see this video come up, and you look at it and say, what is that? You know, because a lot of people still do not know what brass stampings are. Well, here's a really cool thing about them. They are made in the United States. For the most part. Oh, here we go. Here's Dara. Here's Maria. Yay, 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 yay. Hi, guys. Hi. I knew you'd be here. I knew you'd be here. I, I beat you this time. How about that? Okay. My brass stampings that I carry at bsuboutiques.com are made in the United States from historical, what they call tooling, and it's dyes. Have you heard of the, um, a tool and dye maker? My dad uh, worked in skilled trades at Packard Electric years ago. And he was a tinner, so he worked with metal. But then he had other friends who worked as tool and die makers, and they made dies. They made things that could stamp metal. And so, hey, there's Jess Girl. I know who that is. And there's an Andrea. <laughs> Hi, Andrea. Thanks for coming. So um, I'm kind of familiar, like, going back to my childhood with what that means. But it just may basically means that toolers have all these cool dies that they can smack with heavy, heavy presses, like 25,000 25, pounds of pressure against brass. And my brass is rich low, meaning that it's 85% copper and 15% zinc, okay? That's a very good brass, very, very good brass. All made in the United States. I'm not the only person that carries them you'll see other people maybe at Etsy or whatever that carry them but I'm finding that fewer and fewer people have them because they kind of I don't know fell out of favor I don't know why they're so unique and they're so versatile and you could do so much with them but I guess people just got you know really deep into beading and <clears throat> these things um, the tool pieces can sometimes cost a little money on the other hand a really good bead can too right can so anyway these are brass stampings what you see here in the field of view and this oh is i our... just dumped uh, <laughs> i had some i had some uh, water lacquer no oh lacquer oh in there this is and by the way guys this is our new gingerbread brass on yeah. that gingerbread yeah. brass yeah that we're focusing you on know, today yeah we have had it before and then i kind of phased it out because people weren't too interested in it. and i think a lot of the reason they weren't is because I just didn't do much with it. You know, I tended to concentrate on the silver and the brass socks, which is the antique brass color. And, and I just, you know, I made mistakes. I didn't, I didn't focus on it. So now we brought it back in. The first time we got it, the, the plater forgot and he put uh, a small slight lacquer on top of it that made it kind of a satin look. It wasn't matte. And I was not crazy, but I was pretty. And I wanted to get this stuff on, online, so I said, okay, I'm going to go ahead and put it on because we didn't have that much of it. Everybody liked it, um, but when we just, got our, <clears throat> we just got a second order here a week or so ago, and he did not do it, which I asked him not to do it. I wanted it to be matte because you can do a lot more with it if it's matte. You can make it look like a little bit satiny type finish very 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 super easily done um, or if you leave it matte you can distress it and bring up golden highlights or you can apply color to it and then of course you can seal but you can seal it matte or if you want you can seal it satin if you want you can get a can of uh, uh, spray lacquer from the hardware store you know uh, like uh, I like Krylon brand and you get the gloss if you want but go easy because it can it can get really glossy and too much gloss can look kind of fake you know so you may not like that there's chris yeah we got chris there's we got Gloria. ginger hey ginger it's good to see you and she says she loves the gingerbread oh ginger. well, well i wonder why her name her name is ginger too this one you're gonna really love because it's matte and you can do so much with it so i'm just gonna show you 
uh, something right now that you'll notice. Okay, now, what we had, I don't bring any from the website <laughs> that was the shiny type, but this piece right here is a piece that was matte, okay? It looked like this to start with. So this is lovely too. If you like a darker look, that's fine. But I raised it with some steel wool. I've showed you guys many, many times how to use steel wool. This is this, um, quadruple aught, they call it. It's an old fashioned term, meaning 0004, very, very fine steel wool you can use. Sometimes you can just use a nail file. Sometimes you can use those greeny pads that you use to clean dishes with. There's a bunch of stuff that works, but if you want to get down into the cracks and crevices and stuff really good, this is what you want. It makes a mess, but you clean it up as you go and it won't be so bad. So anyway, so this is what it looks like when it comes, when I get it. Matt, this is Matt Gingerbread Brass. What about a nail file? Or are those yeah, not good to they use? do, but they... But like they, a buffer? Yeah, you can do that. The buffing block, like this. Excuse me, I've got one right here. Yeah, that might be a little less messy, maybe? But will you get the effect? No, they're still messy. You, oh, can, sell, okay. you can tell I've used it. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, this, this probably works better than just a board, you know, camera okay. board type thing. But anyhow, yeah, you could use this too. But anyhow, so I don't like the mite, you know. The I matte. know you love it, Matt. Gloria, it's not so much that I love it. It's because I, there's more possibilities with it because... Versatile? Yes, you can do more with it. I mean, it. just look at the difference, Gloria. I mean, that's that's quite a difference. This, this, is, this is the same as what we have had the first time on the site, except I distressed it. it you can see the this, shine. With, all I did is I put um, smart coat on it, that stuff from Sculpt Nouveau that I have on the website, that satin finish, I have a satin finish, and then so it took on the shine, and it's permanent. So. And then you have to seal it, right? It, no. The, oh. the smart coat seals it, it's a sealant. So, you know, oh. if you have some of the Swelligant, um stuff left where did i put it i had a ball of it sitting right here you see it yeah this stuff i still have some um you can still buy this i'm going to be honest with you i don't carry it because um they've the person who's mostly carrying it now which is not christy friesen um they jack price up too much, and I'm sorry, I'm just not going for it. I'd rather go straight to the company who makes it, which is Sculpt Nouveau, and I always knew that. But when she made it and she put in these small bottles, it was so practical for craftspeople. And I thought, brilliant, 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 I'll buy it. And I did, and I sold it to you guys for like 10 years, and I did a lot of videos on it. But it was basically the same thing as this, Sculpt Nouveau, Smart Okay. Club. It's the same thing, same company. Um... And I just really, really like it. So, Gloria, you can use the satin, or you could just go get a can of gloss spray, spray uh, varnish, spray lacquer, and hit it with that. But go easy, because if you put too much on it, on the brass, as much as you like bling and you like sparkle <laughs> and shine, you may not like that, because it can get looking real fakey real quick so you got to go pick careful the satin same thing you don't want to put too much of it on but it does with this i think it kind of looks like um hey jan i i think it kind of it reminds me of the old rose ox that i used to carry remember that mm -hmm. it was kind of a antique copper that was shined up mm -hmm. and then he put a coat on top of it to make it shiny so and all it was was the same thing as you'd get out of a can of spray lacquer so having this available on the mat is really good because you have options if you want to make it look like that have at it this is really super easy and i'm going to demonstrate that today if somebody has not seen that before if you want to add color it's easy you know sealing it is super easy you can change it up a lot and you can do the same things that i'm doing today with the matte gingerbread um with the matte black they have that matte finish it has kind of a, a tooth to it i don't know how else to describe it hi june 
it um, it just distresses really super easy. Um, it colorizes super <clears throat> easy. Brass Ox does pretty good too, but matte is just, I don't even know if he makes that in matte. I don't know if I want it. I, I, I don't have the money to be experiment, experimenting like that anymore, but the matte black and the matte gingerbread are doing really well. People really like them, and I just kind of thought it would be a good day maybe to show you some things that I found out, and you can try when you buy it. Now, if you have some that you bought from me a, a month or so ago, then you have the, the one that has a little bit of the shine coat on it. And you might be happy with that. If you don't like it, take your steel wool and just buff it off if you don't like it. And it'll just go back. But it'll be highlighted too because underneath this is brass. I hope I'm making some sense, especially if mm -hmm. someone is super new to this and doesn't know poo about it, you know. Um, it's not advanced stuff. It's just stuff that if you're new to brass stampings, you might just not know. You just might not know, you know, so. But they're wonderful. They're versatile. Um, you know, you can make a beautiful frame for Cameo, for example. These just came in. I've had them before. This is um, that famous picture was it, was it, I can't remember if it was William Games, Gainsborough or if it was the other guy. I can't remember. Painted it. It was called Pinky, I think. And back in the 60s and the 50s, everybody had Blue Boy and Pinky. There were little pictures in your house. It was kind of a thing, decor, decorator thing back then. And people liked to wear jewelry with Pinky in it. And then it just kind of fell out of fashion. So now it's real vintage. And I got some Pinky cabs. They're vintage German decal on porcelain and um i know somebody that had some in their basement and so i got some and they're really very nice and what i really like about pinky is she is dressed in regency style clothing the bonnet is regency her dress is regency and of course we're doing that regency challenge so i thought well no no time like the present to get some pinkies in here you know so Anyway, who's listening while driving up? But that's Dara. Oh, that no, that's was, Gloria. That was Gloria. Yeah, that's Gloria. Okay. Well, yeah, it doesn't matter. You listen however you like. Just be safe. <laughs> anyway, so um, that's kind of the thing. So I'm going to show you a few things with um, distressing this stuff that you can do. And it's real, real basic. And, you know, after that, it's experimentation. The two things, yeah, pink lady. Pinky, pink lady. And pinky, pinky and blue boy, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, one artist painted one and another artist painted the other and I looked it up some time a while ago and of course I can't remember it anymore so I have to look it up again but I think one was Gainsborough but I could be like dead wrong anyway so I'm just going to show you what I do with a raw piece and I could do this again but we already did one so I'm going to take something else and do something with it so I've got this Maybe I use this this time. This piece, I don't know if you could, yeah, it shows up pretty good. I just put some of those on Etsy. Yeah. This piece is a really cool piece that the toolers have made for years and years on end. The design comes from a tool that went back to the arts and crafts yes. movement period. Most of the stuff on our website is arts and crafts movement. Or it's Art Nouveau. Nouveau. There's some that's Victorian, um, but people get mixed up. And that's why I've done the classes on that in the past to, to educate people. But this one is very pronouncedly arts and crafts. And the reason is, is because of the flora and fauna type thing. There's little bugs up here. You see this, those type bugs in the arts and crafts stuff a lot. And also the swirly pattern. You know, arts and crafts to me is almost like midway between Art Nouveau and Art Deco. It's like soft deco in a way. But um, it came, it started um, end of the 1800s, like 1890. That would have been aesthetic period as far as Victorian is concerned. And I think it stayed pretty popular up to about the 30s. And there were different, um, oh, they called them schools. Different schools of thought. And people, did you espouse to this one or that? 
And I, I know there was one in Germany. It was, well, let's see if I can say it, Wiener Verkestata. Is it? <laughs> I think I said it right, Wiener Verkestata. You have to look it up. I'll have to spell it for you. I always love saying it. Um, then there were some in England that were very, very popular and some in the United States. And some of the artists who made um, arts and crafts jewelry, um, one of the most famous ones that comes to my head right off, although there are many, many others, and it's because his last name was Knox, K-N-O-X, Alexander Knox. And his, his jewelry is very valuable today. And the reason I remember is because my maiden name mm-hmm. is Knox. I don't know if there's any relationship or anything like that relation, but um, I do know one famous one was that, but there are many, many more. So anyway, this is arts and crafts, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about distressing it. <laughs> so see how I go down the primrose path? I need notes, baby. I'll tell you what, I just get off the track. Anyway, I'm going to distress it. So I've got my buffing block. I'm going to start with this. Sarah says she loves that piece, by the way. Good. And yes, I just put some of them up on our Etsy shop, Dara. So you can see how I'm kind of um, scrubbing around the edges of it first. You know, you'll develop your own technique for it. But what I can tell already is I'm not going to be able to get as deep on this as I'd like to see in this. So I'm going to have Need to... the steel wool? Yeah, probably. Yeah. So when you distress the gingerbread, you come out with some brass highlights? Yeah, because why? It's brass. It's based. brass. You're removing, you're removing the finish, it's, that's all. It's interesting because when you buff back and distress the matte black, you actually get... Like it looks coppery. Little, looks a little highlights. coppery, and that's because of the way that he makes metal. Which I love, actually. This is the steel wool, and I'm trying to get down in there. Another thing you got to be careful with when you're rubbing and scrubbing on the stuff, if there's a lot of detail, be careful that you don't buff so hard that you remove design detail. Like you just buff it out, because mm-hmm. I've done that, and it wrecks it. Okay. So don't want to do that. Go, go easy. Check what you're doing. Don't just scrub away on it and listen to the radio and going at it. And then you're looking like, oh, no. So anyway, so I'm just getting a good. Hi, Nancy. Nancy Ayers just joined Hey, us. Nancy. It's good to see ya. So glad you joined us. Now, of course, this makes a mess. And any of you that work with it know that, you know, the steel wool just makes a mess. So I don't just keep making mess. I, I clean it up as I go Anyway, this is coming up pretty nice. And the more I distress this, the more it's reminding me of Rose Ox, if you guys remember that. The only thing about Rose Ox is that it um, had a little bit of a black antique to it. And the reason for that was it was formulated to mock the color of the copperon finish that they put on Matisse and Renoir products, jewelry is very collectible jewelry back in the 50s and 60s. And I worked on that with my plater because I wanted that on purpose. And people have said, oh, get it back, but you know, I've been a little bit afraid because it's, you know, it limits you. You know, that's, that's the look you're gonna get. Where with the matte black, you can kind of take it where you wanna go. So that's why I went with matte. But yeah, it had some, uh, deep, like sepia brown black type. But I mean, if you like that, you could always, once you have this distressed, add, go in and just add a little bit of you your could, own black. But then what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to be sure that you use a satin finish sealant because when you add black to this, it will not be shiny anymore. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, but you can get that back. And you'd want to go very, very little and work your way because you can always add more, but yeah, light, it's light probably coats, harder to take light away coats, light coats. than add. <laughs> I'm not sure, but I think you probably could remove it when the finish is new and hasn't kind of cured all the way. You'd probably remove it with um, um, nail polish remover. Okay. But I don't know. I'm just thinking probably. Maybe, what would what not. would you suggest as the best thing to to use f- to add like a black antiquing? Just black acrylic paint. Okay. Like I had some sitting here where it is now. I don't know, but yeah, just black. You know, like we've done on the brass. How many times we've done it? We clean up our brass, and they say, okay, we want to bring up detail. What do we do? We run and get the black acrylic paint, or if you're quick, you can use a sharpie marker. Put it on and wipe it off right away. 
and you can you can get it that way too either way works you're gonna have to seal it anyhow that makes me mad i know i was just looking here it is this stuff this testers craft it doesn't matter what brand you know mm -hmm. ceram coat is a good one and oh there's just gobs of them in the craft store i i bought this in a set from one of my suppliers and they of course don't have it anymore but i love the testers products so this one, it says it's a matte black. Interesting. We might have to try something with that. I did not notice that. It's a matte black finish. We'll have to have a look okay. at that. Anyway, this one's pretty. Yeah, pretty. that came out beautiful. Yeah. It might be pretty to do that and then just add the, like the teeniest little bit of our copper perfect pearls. Well, it would not. It, it If you... Think you like, like that look? There's no reason why you like couldn't. if it's a design that's like dapped and like erased, and you just kind of you know what you're your gonna finger. have to. Hi, Karma. I don't do Facebook anymore. What's your group working on? We're doing um, a Regency period jewelry slash Jane Austen time. So we're gonna be having the classes for that on YouTube, and this time the series is free. Normally I charge for those, but I'm not this time i'm hoping in january to start that series again but it's going to be project driven this time when i did it before i called it responsible repurposing a lot of you guys took that class we had a really good time with it but this time i'm going to be really concentrating on okay so here's that look you can learn all about now how could you recreate something kind of sort of like that so yeah you uh, you can watch the the classes here i'm not entirely sure when i'm going to have them yet but if you get my newsletter it'll be in there it's going to be soon as i'm only going to do two or max three classes because the challenge is over november 20th so i'm going to have to get them you know in there and if anybody wants like uh, a little um, muse box to you know make um, regency type style jewelry i can't make them all the same but whoever wants one, I can make you stuff that will work and you can have a good time. I don't know how much, though, right now. Probably have to... Mm, I guess 60 bucks and something for shipping would probably take care of it. And I could give you a good bit of stuff for that. So, anyway, it's not like, you know, a big junk muse box. I'm not talking about this would be, like, curated. In other words, I planned it. It's just I can't have, like, ten of them in a row because I don't have enough stuff to make ten exactly in a row. So they would all be customized, which is even better. I think you could get a customized muse package for $60 and four ninety five shipping, which that's not even all the shipping. We'd be paying part of it. That's, that's pretty crazy. But you could. Anyway, how beautiful is that? That's really pretty. How beautiful that. I'll put that information in the next newsletter that I do, and I will also put it in the group, which I understand, Karma, that you're not on Facebook. That's okay. You know what? Are you subscribed to our newsletter? Subscribe to our newsletter, and you'll get yeah. all the information on this Yeah, it, I will put it in there the next time. And um, the thing is, if you want to do the challenge, we're posting our pictures on my creative group, which is on Facebook. And there will be a, a gifty. There's yeah, a might big be, it gifty. might be worth it for you to join just to be on the creative group. That's up to you. I'm not saying do it. I'm just saying just to be on the creative group because we do a lot of fun stuff there. And the gift for the drawing on this is gonna be a hundred dollar free shopping pass to Bisa Boutiques, and that's nothing to sniff at. So but I'm gonna I'm not gonna do it like, oh I like that one best or this one best. No, it's just gonna be a drawing. I'll count up whoever participated and then we'll do a drawing. Based on numbers. And whoever gets it, gets it. I keep looking at this. This is so pretty. Yeah, Ginger oh wants goodness. to know if it needs sealed. Yes. Yes. So if you want a little bit of a satin look to it like this. See, I didn't buff this one as hard as I did this one. So it's really come up like rose Really off, shiny. Yeah, really I really super like it. Um, but what I did is I used the satin coat, which like I say, I do like the Sculpt Nouveau stuff. It's a little bit spendy, but you get a lot for it. You get a great spray can, which yeah, I Yeah, like. it's a big bottle. Yeah, it is. It's like... It's eight ounces. Like, big, 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 big. The sprayer thing. Yeah, it's know. an eight ounce and bottle. And if you want to paint it on, you just 
take the top off and take it and pour it into something, which I'm going to do that right now because I'm going to want to. In fact, I'm just going to, this is how I do it. I just take this out and kind of lean it. And then whatever comes up in the tube, I just kind of dump out on here because you don't need much. I spray it too, but it just seems like um, when I spray it, sometimes it just, I'm losing, you know, like, like it's, some's being wasted. So I do it this way. But um, you, you don't have to buy this. Go to the hardware store. You don't want to spend that kind of money. Go to the hardware store and buy a can of spray lacquer. Get the satin stuff so that you'll get a little bit of shine if you like the shine. If you don't, get the matte. If you like it super shiny, then get the glossy and go easy. Or you might not like it. She says there's so much more depth to the piece. There now. is. I mean, you, couldn't, you couldn't tell before what all was there, right? So now... But... I would think with the spray that you're using, mm -hmm. with when you use Krylon, mm -hmm. like the spray, like you need to kind of be outside and have like heavy ventilation. Well, you should be outside. Me, what I do is I run downstairs and do it downstairs with the overhead exhaust on. And I, I kind of spritz it, and then I leave right away. But this stuff, stay. you probably... Or I used to take it outside. But this stuff, weather. you probably don't have to be... No. With, so that kind yeah. of makes it, you're not taking yeah, in all this, those chemicals. This, no, you don't. It it's has very little smell and it's not toxic. In fact, I think the MSDS even tells you that. So this is kind of better. Oh, listen, this is interesting. It says, do not use acetone or any solvent bead based cleaner. So in other words, if you get this on here and don't like it, don't use acetone, take it off. That's nail polish remover. Mm -hmm. Um. And you want to shake it well before you use shake it. Shake it well. Yeah, it's low, what they call, BSC or something. Because, I mean, I do like Krylon spray, yeah. but now that I'm comparing. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's non-toxic in the sense that you could just pick it up and drink it. Who would want to well, do that no, anyway? But, but. <laughs> but if it's a little bit airborne, it shouldn't hurt you, you know. Whereas I can't say that for a can of Krylon. Mm -hmm. you know, so you have to be, you know aware of that so yeah this is kind of so pretty ginger i can't hardly bear to put anything over it. that's fact i don't think i will so what i'm going to do now here's the back of course it's still the same look and i think if i'm going to leave it like this i think i'd like to have a little bit of shine on the back too so i'm just going to take care of that i won't sh i won't shine it up as much but and i won't seal it now so i can go back and do it over just so you can see now here's the thing Okay, I got some. And, you know, I like to go around the edge. Okay, so I got some going up there. All right, now, so. Um, now, of course, this isn't drilled. You could drill it. Just put a hole right there. It will work great. Drill a hole. The hole punch would work with this, too. It's not so thick that it would. I would put it right here, and you'll be good. I like to seal my hole sometimes, so I might put a tube ribbit through and give it a whack, but you don't have to. But here's something else I've been doing, and I'm liking it. And it doesn't require any drilling, because some people don't like to drill. Hey, Michelle. And here's Wearing Stones, Annalise from Norway. Hey. How you doing? I love that name. I do, too. So pretty. It is so pretty. I have to apologize for my nails. I'm always after Lauren. Your nails got to look good. I painted mine over the weekend because I was going to go somewhere. And then I started doing this today, and now they look pretty rotten. So I'm sure you guys will forgive me. <laughs> anyway, since I'm doing this kind of work. Well, here's what I want to do to make this hang without drawing a hole. This little piece, which just came in, I don't even know if Diane's going to get them on the side quite yet. If I glue that into the middle there, now I'm going to distress that because that's not. Oh, smart. And then what I can do is I can take this piece to make it hang. But then you can hang something down in the and middle, And you can hang too. a little crystal <gasps> down in there. Or, um, let's see, what else? Oh, well, this one. I had a bunch of things that would work. Or this one, if you like something that looks more like that. You know, I kind of like that one better, honestly. Um, so then you could just beat up the sides and it'd be great. 
it would be so different and really cool looking. So anyway, so if I'm going to do that, I'm going to have to buff that. this out. I won't have to do the back because the back won't be showing. Well, this is a, yeah. Yeah, this is a little bit hard because it's so small. I'm just going to probably buff off all my nail polish too, but that's okay. It's time for it to come off. I just want to make sure that you're in. Yeah. Focus. I'm, I'm going to have, very shortly, I'm going to have Lauren teach me how to do this myself. Not because I don't like her company, but it's just I should learn it too. It's just so much easier to have, like, I wouldn't be able to control that thing from jiggling around if I didn't have a helper. Okay, so that came up pretty good. Now I'm going to, maybe, maybe I'll just do this. My, yeah. And get the edges good. And then I'll just, you know, put it on here and see, you know, if it's going to match. Yeah, that's pretty good. Gloria said your nails were pretty when you started. Don't worry. Yeah, they were. They were. And <laughs> they're kind of getting ding. They're not too bad. The underside, no, they're all died. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to have to do this one, too. Yeah, I don't do my nails very often. I, My nails will grow nice and long on their own. So these are my nails. I didn't get acrylic nails or anything like that. Um, and I just leave them bare most of the time. Or if I did get them done, if I went and got them done professionally, I'd get a French manicure. But I just, I work with my hands and they get messed up and it's just, you know, I'm just done with that. So I just paint them once in a while. Use gel and then they'll last. Not that good. I've had gel. They don't last oh, that good. okay. My nails grow too fast. That's why. It doesn't work. Well, it works, but it only looks good for about a week. So, anyway, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, this is going to be absolutely really beautiful. I'm going to have to um, really choose carefully what, yeah, I'm going to have to get into that. I was trying to show you that. how you did that, but. Yeah, it's, I'll have to get down in there. But anyway, it's pretty good on top. Let me look and see what it looks like on camera. Yeah, that could actually have a little bit more put in it. Yeah. yeah, you want to take a good bit off. I just did, too. Yeah, that matches not good. That matches real good now. Okay, so what I'll do is I will glue this on here. And like I say, this is a connector piece. So you can like make bracelets out of it, earring drops, whatever, whatever you like. But in this case, I'm going to make it into a hanger so that you have that flex with it. You know, you can do that. So here we go. And I got a little bit too much, so I have to be careful. And she's using the, the E6000 glue. Yeah, I am using E6000. If you don't like that, use whatever you like. Just don't use hot glue because that's a mistake. But you guys know that. Okay, so I'm just trying to get it to come really just right in the middle. So sometimes the best way to check that is look at the back. Yep. Yep. That's pretty good because if you get it off center, I'm going to take it off just so I can look at it real close. Okay. If you get it off center, it won't look good, and it will frustrate you, and you'll end up taking it off and doing it again. All right, that's pretty good. Let's see how that looks. The camera, yeah. the camera yeah. doesn't lie, so we'll have a look at what the camera does, says. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. I'll zoom that's in just good. a little bit. All right, so then what that. I'll do is when that gets set up real good, I'll just put a coppery jumper gun, which I do have a lot of mine. I don't know how many is on site, but I got a huge bag full of them around here. So anyway, we got to get them on there. But yeah. And then I'll just decide whatever kind of beads that I want. Let me just put this up. Ginger says you're the queen of cleverness. I'm the queen. Okay. <laughs> you're too much, Ginger. You just love me. That's all. <laughs> that's what I always tell people when they're so nice. You just love me. That's all. Anyway, so that's going to look pretty sweet. Yeah. Now, would this work for a Regency style piece? Well, it's arts and crafts. And Regency was 1811 to 1830. So it doesn't fit that period. However, the shape of it works. So if you wanted this to be a Regency type piece, if you know, because we're not being like in this Spot shot. On. No, um, we're not doing reproductions. No. If you can make a Regency type 
that reminds you of Regency type piece out of paper. So long as you use a few of my parts with it, go for it. Polymer clay, go for it. Epoxy sculpt, go for it. Just use a few of my parts with it and I'm happy. You know, the farther outside the box you go, the better because nobody's going to say you're wrong. You do. You. You. <laughs> You know, you look at that jewelry, and we're gonna we're gonna get together real soon because my book on Georgian jewelry showed up, and I'm, we're gonna go through that like we did in Responsible Purposing. Remember how many books we went through? Um, it was very hard to find. There's not a lot on Georgian jewelry. And you say, well, didn't you just say Regency? I did, but Georgian jewelry encompasses Regency. Georgian jewelry started in I think 1714 or 1719, and it went to 1837 which was already into Victoria's first part of her reign. So um, Georgian jewelry and Regency jewelry, they're all the same type thing, but Regency was a style that cropped up toward the end of the Georgian period and had its own look. So, and we know that in the 20th century, how many different looks came out then? Art Deco came out on Art Modern, Retro Style, um, you name it, 50s Deco. It, all kinds of styles came out, so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, but that's what that was. So I'll show you in the book, so you know I'm not making it up, and then you can be inspired however, and you can take that information, go on to the Internet and do your own research. There's, there's a lot written out there, a lot more of on Georgian jewelry than on Regency, and I will tell you this. If you're looking for inspiration, um, if you're looking for inspiration on Pinterest, mm -hmm. be careful because... A lot of people put pieces they've made up and they say that they Regency. feel that they're in the Regency style, but they're not. But it's not real. If you're Regency. looking for correct correctness, you may not find it. You know, I, I see people making stuff and putting up Victorian, 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 and you see it. They come up in these galleries with the real stuff, and people get confused. And a lot of times they're made with American-made brass stampings like I saw, which is great, but they're just, they're not Victorian. You know, but nobody's going to get mad and holler at them because, hey, you know, if you like it, you buy it, you wear it, enjoy, have fun, you know. But it's if you want to be a stickler for is this really that time, uh, sometimes I have to say no. Like with the art, arts and crafts stuff, people call stuff arts and crafts is not at all arts and crafts, but this is. So just so you know, we're going to learn a lot. But the Regency part... Um, we're going to do now, we're doing it now, we're getting it started now, and it's free. Normally these classes are a paid class, but the Regency part is free, and you can see, do you like doing this kind of thing? And uh, if you do, in January, we'll start the big class that encompasses everything after the Georgian period up to, like, now. And it's going to be project-driven, so... You Pamela Stansbury just got out. Hey, Pamela, I haven't seen you for a while. Yeah, she says she's been out for a you while. You had me at the word distress. Yeah, you you like that kind of stuff. Hey, Melissa, um, you like the mixed media stuff. It's good to see you. I'm so glad you came. That's great. I was thinking about you the other day. I was going through some um, videos that people had made comments on. Because, you know, you can make comments on these videos but you can also do it on old ones, too. I mean, it can be 10 years old, and you can still comment. So somebody had done it on some that were two or three years old, and I saw you pop up there. And I said, oh, where's Pamela been? I said, well, she must be busy. So it's good to see you. Um, oh, two, I didn't start out saying this, but I'm going to say it, and I'll say a little bit more about it at the end. If you've not subscribed to my channel yet, and I think most of you guys have, um, please do so. Like You can click on notifications, too, so when I come on, if you don't know, like I say, I learned how to do this on myself, and I get this idea, and I say, I'm going on, I'm going to tell them about it right now, you know, then you'll get dinged, and you'll know. If you can come, come running, I'm on. Um, but also, I wanted to ask you, too, if you like the video, please mm -hmm. click the thumbs up button. We need that. That's something we can't do for ourselves that helps our rank at YouTube, which YouTube is Google and Google is YouTube. And so that's how you get found on the Internet. It helps a lot. Your when comments our, as When well. our viewers and the comments. Now, these comments are great, mm -hmm. but we're not talking about these comments. We're talking about the comments that come under the description of the video. Below the video, once Below it's the posted. Video, once it's posted, you can't. 
I don't think it'll let you make them right now because we're no. live. Mm -mm. But after we're done, you can go there and you can make uh, comments. And I do respond. If you ask questions or you make some comment, I will respond if it's only to thank you. And I will thank you because that is not something that I can do for myself or we can do for ourselves because if I do it, it doesn't count. Only unique people like viewers. Only viewers count. So if you can do that for us, um, I can't tell you how much that helps us. And we're doing more videos now than ever and we're just really working hard to try and find... I try to expand our audience a little bit because uh, we need we need that. Yep, we're trying different days, different times yeah. as well. Yeah, and I'm you know, and Lauren's willing to stay a little bit later so we can do it at five thirty. So I'm thinking maybe more people are maybe home from work or something. Then I don't know. So aw, that's nice, Pamela. So anyway, what I would do with this now, Ginger, since this is done and you like it and i like it too we just need to seal i just it, right? i just have to seal it so i will use the swag and clear cut but i'm going to brush it on in this case so i need a brush hi mod no problem Let's you can see. always go back oh, and rewatch. That's, yeah that's but we're a, glad to have you i always you. tell people you know you can once these are done fast forward through them and, and get to the you know do whatever you want yeah just, you know, get to where you want to see. So I'm just putting a little bit over top of this piece here. And again, this is the... I'm not going to put any on here yet because I don't want to run the risk of, of uh, moving it. This is the Sculpt Nouveau. And yeah. this is the... Satin. The satin yeah. finish, I think they I think they make a glossy too, but I think satin is good enough. If you want glossy, go get it out of a can. And you receive an 8-ounce bottle. So you get yeah. a good bit. Yeah. It's the equivalent of four four bottles of the old stuff. Like, where did I put this one? It's the equivalent of four of these. So, anyway. That's a good bit. I like the... <laughs> I, you know what? I really, time. really like the matte one. See, look how this is kind of deepening. When I put, this looks so much like Rosox. It's crazy. Um... What I really, really like is the matte one because you don't lose anything there. I mean, whatever you did, that's how it's going to translate. That's that's it. Even like know. the shine when you use now, the matte, it um, doesn't turn it matte? If you use matte, there's going to be no shine. It's going to be just however, however it looked before you put it on is how it's going to look after you put it on. And this is so easy to apply. It's crazy. Now, I might go over this with another... Uh, coat so for afterwards. this in particular since you brought out the shine you would want to use like the satin or something um no not necessarily because you guys can see if you go back and look at this before i put that on it didn't look like this did it not quite this deepened it a little bit it's still shiny it's so pretty it looks so rose ox it's nuts i love this Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I am just over the moon. I wouldn't want to put anything else on this except, like I say, sealant. And then get the right beads and stuff. And I could hang a little crystal there in the middle. I think I got this bumped to make sure of that. But, yeah, this dries real quick, too, which is also very nice. But, I mean, okay, this is basically the same thing, but I didn't buff it out as hard. But you can see how it's deepened and it's different. This is so much different. So you've got that ability to change it up at will. How and this you want is the same be. finish. Yeah. It's all matte gingerbread. You you make it how you want, you know. So there's that. So I'm going to just kind of move this so up So again, here. guys, this is the the piece. This is how it looks. This when is you, how it looks. This is how it looks when you get it. Like here's another piece like that. See, that's an Art Nouveau lady there. That's how it looks like when you get it. But if you scrub on that, you know, being careful not to lose any of the detail, um, it'll look like this. And then, which I don't think we're going to be able to fit it in today, but um, you know these little X-shaped filigrees and people have said, now see this, I sprayed, you can see, I put satin on that. And this looks a lot like the stuff I got from the tool and probably a little bit more satiny. But anyway... People have wondered, you know, what do you do with that, you know? 
I like to use it to encase a piece to make it hang. Okay, somebody was talking the other day on the group about manipulated filigree. That's what it is. And you just center this in the middle. I think I've showed you guys how to do this before. You center it in the middle, and then you just bend these over onto it. And now you have a mount, and it looks like this in the back. Not too bad. And I also like to do it to um, my little squirrels. You guys know I love the squirrels. I ordered these in gingerbread, and I'm not going to get them again because it just, they look pretty because I scrubbed on them, but I did lose a little detail on the one. In fact, it's this one, I think. No, it's this one. So um, it's just, there's so much detail in this that it'd be better like in brass ox, which I did get a lot of in brass ox. But anyway, all you do is put this guy. Or what about in the black, if you just dress the black? Yeah, be good. Because I, 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 I didn't, I didn't, yeah, but I didn't order them black because I knew this would happen. I just did it in gingerbread. I don't know. I maybe I temporarily lost my mind or something because I knew it would get kind of, you know, um, blurred. Money. All I do is just bend these over, and then I have a way to hang it through the holes in the back. So that makes it nice. She says, "I'm ready for marathon." She says, <laughs> Annalise. Well, um. We have a lot more on than we have, and then we will have the class, which will be, we'll pick a day. Um, I know Lauren can't do it this weekend, so it wouldn't be this weekend. It, would, it might start next weekend. She had said she might not mind coming on a Saturday, so more could come. But we're going to have to wait and see. So she and I will work that out, and then I'll mm -hmm. let you know real soon, okay? And we oh, can you like my fingernail polish. <laughs> <laughs> it did look nice. Now it looks kind of cack, but... So I want to ask um, the challenge. Mm -hmm. It is going on. So we're allowed to start posting. Yeah. Already, right? I made a mistake. I confused poor Andrea the other day. Um, Andrea Schubert. I don't have anything she ready said, yet. She said, "Be Sue, I thought I you said we don't post until October 30th. And then Dara very kindly uh, sent me through Messenger a <laughs> copy that she had on her phone. This is this is what you said, Brenda. And I'm like, oh, boy. I goofed up, you know. Well, it doesn't matter really, you know. Go ahead and post them. If you have stuff to post, post it. You have to use a hash you have to post it on the creative group and you have to use hashtag the hashtag symbol B Sue Jane. All our case no space. One word, yeah. B Sue Jane. That's it. It's the and pound sign, B Sue Jane. Pound, because what that does is then Facebook will kind of archive those under that and we can find everybody's work with just a click. So that's why this is And safe. then we can make sure you get counted then, then we make for the sure gifty. You have, I have a lot on you. You have a lot. Oh, thank you. Yeah, we do. We have 506 videos. And as of this one, it'll be 507. And we also crossed another little hurdle the other day. Uh, we have 41K subscribers now. Nice. After 13 years of banging our heads. <laughs> it really, you know, I didn't understand for a lot of years how YouTube really worked and I ignored people on here because sometimes I didn't want to look because people used to be kind of mean and um, I just put my video on and away I'd go you know and I didn't pay much attention I didn't really develop community here and if I had we'd have far over a hundred by now but I didn't and the main thing is you know you can subscribe by clicking a button. That's all good. That helps us a lot. So we're glad. But if you don't come back like you guys do and visit with me or watch the video or whatever, you know, these are live so you can visit with me. But like when Javi and I used to make them, they weren't always live. Um, then how much community do we really have? You know, it's the same way at the group. We have over 6,000 members, the Beast of Boutique's creative group. But there's probably only... 50 max who show up a lot but then people come and go too and that's okay sometimes people have to go away for a while sometimes they lose interest you know maybe they have health problems or maybe they're depressed or maybe something sad happened in their life and they just got to deal with it and they just can't be there we understand believe me do I understand I understand so well you know but then they come back and I'll tell you, I get so happy to see somebody come back. It just makes my day. Makes my day. So I'm glad to see you today, Pamela. There's Karen Gale. 
She didn't realize there was a live video today. Don't worry, honey. It's okay. I did post about it and was in the newsletter last night. But you know what? It's easy to miss. It's no big deal. It's here. You can watch it anytime, right? Yep. Once it's posted, you can go back yeah, and rewatch. Yeah, so nobody's ever late. As yeah. much as you want. Nobody's ever late. Yeah, this is still sticky, so I'm not going to guess it. Okay, so now, here's another little trick that I discovered. Okay, now a lot of people, I just started getting these again. I haven't Love had him. Piece. I haven't had him for a long time. <laughs> this is Beauty and the Beast. Can you see? Which I showed him a week or so ago uh, in the matte black, though, uh -huh. I think. Well, this is Beauty and the Beast, right? Here's the Beast. He's up there drooling <laughs> nastily. <laughs> yeah, Dara's right ready. Did you guys see what Dara did over the weekend? She made hair jewelry. Ooh. I love hair jewelry. She, she took some of her daughter's uh, hair from when she was little, and she worked it into a little woven thing and put it in a locket. It was really cool. You guys got to see it. I put it in the newsletter the last time, so if you get that, you'll see it's in there. It's also on the group, too. Yeah, she made hair jewelry. Now, that was that was something. I know she, she struggled with it, too, but she got it. She did it. Anyway, so anyhow, um, so that's Beauty and the Beast. And it's just a plain flat, you know, like this. There's no hanger on it. You know, there's no hanger on that. You got to drill a hole or put a hanger on it or do something. Well, yeah, because sometimes I'm nervous, too, with the pieces when they're hollow on the back. Yeah. Like what to use what to do you get do? it to hang. Well, I found something. So. It's the queen of cleverness again, Ginger. Oh, <laughs> what she did. Anyway, so I buffed this one out. I like to have it buffed out a little bit more, but I want to be able to show you how I put this thing on there so I stopped before I got too, went too far in it. But um, what I did is I took this earring hanger and put it on the back, glued it on. You guys see that? I made so many, you know, let me put, turn it the other way because you might recognize it then. I've made so many earrings out of this piece, it's nuts. Can yeah, you? Yeah, if you want to, yeah, bring it up that way. Just give it a little. There we go. Yeah. Right there. Right there. Yep. Yeah, so I put this. I cut the middle, because there's another hanger hole here. I cut that off. Just snipped it. And then it. I inverted it the other way. Glued it on, because this is hollow in the back, so I could use a good bit of glue behind it. It's not going to hurt anything. I put this hole right down here adjacent to this tip. That way I know it's going to hang straight. It's going to be right. And then I have my other two here. There is a little bit of the back shown, but not enough to matter. So what will happen now, this will dry... And now I have a way to make it into a necklace. Cool. Perfect. Yeah, that's pretty. Just I love no that color, piece. no color, just just buffing it back, you know. Right? Yeah. Dara? Well, thank you, Dara. <laughs> Once in a while I come up with some. Now here's another one I did. Since we're on that. Oh yes, the dancing girl. You remember this one? I just put her up I in have, that black. I have not had this chick for a long time yeah we have her in matte black I, on the etsy she looks like she has a headache or something <laughs> <laughs> i don't know she's her she's flipping her dress around maybe it gave her a headache i don't know she, she's doing the the head swinging i, I don't the know hair she <laughs> is definitely an art nouveau piece yes why do i say that because you see this tendril stuff going on here do you see that this tendril stuff going on. That is what they call the undulating line. And almost every Art Nouveau piece has the undulating line. Oh. Um, well, most of our... Um, for example, this piece. Our muse ladies, aren't they considered Art Nouveau? I don't know what you mean, muse ladies. Like, um, well, I call them muse ladies. Like the ones with the harp or like the... those. Yeah, a lot of them are. A lot of them are Art Nouveau, yeah. Um, this is also an Art Nouveau piece because there again, the hair, undulating line. Huh. That's good to know. Yeah. That's the biggest way to tell it's Art Nouveau. You look for the undulating line. Okay. And it's almost always there. She's lost in the tango. <laughs> She's lost in the tango. She might be lost in the tangles. <laughs> her dress might be all tangled up around her ankles and she'll fall on her nose. <laughs> But anyway, I always, you know, I haven't gotten this guy, girl for a long time. I always thought she was really curious. I think we have a couple. Oh, we have one that looks like she's walking on clouds. 
now. It came in. I don't know if I got it in gingerbread. But, um, I'll have to look for that Yeah, one. we got that. And then I know we have it in brass socks. And this and one is distressed. I got this one. The yeah. one that she's showing. This is super distressed. Yeah. Okay. She's adorable. She's like, hey, Rose. Nice to see you. So she's always been a problem because, you know, if I'm going to drill her so I can make her hang, if there's no I'm going to be drilling her in the head. Yeah, we don't want it's not going to look too good, you know. <laughs> so I can I could drill it here and here. And she but, really will be holding her head. Yeah, <laughs> I should be drilling the head. So I can put, put here and here, but that's not going to hang right, you know, if I do it on the edges of her dress. If I drilled here and here, it would probably mess up the stamping and not look good and it wouldn't hang right either. No. so you got to put something on the back to make it work i mean she so, makes a good brooch but if you want her as a necklace yeah if you want her as a necklace well most people would rather have a necklace right. so what i did is once again i put one of those hangers on the back so now it's got a pretty design there the only thing that was a little bit strange about it was the way her hair is formed i kind of had to really mess with it to get this to come in the middle so that when I hang it, it doesn't go, you know, crookedy. But I think I've got it pretty good. So what I would do then is I would distress maybe this piece because I kind of like this piece to make, let me get this all the way. Well, I went too high. <laughs> That's good. To make her hang, maybe use there. that, be pretty, or maybe, um, we'd rather do the piece I did for, um, this, a lot more of these two. That'd be, that probably, I like that better. I like that better. It has the same lines to it too. Although this is really kind of Victorian, but it doesn't matter. Um, not in this case. Yeah, that would be pretty like that. That would be pretty. You can make it into a really pretty necklace. Mm -hmm. Super pretty. She is a piece, Dara, when we were talking about the matte black, that we love how we distress it. She would be really pretty she, if you distressed her yeah, hair. Yeah, because if you don't, you can't even tell what's going on. It's but just you would a blob. You give her hair natural highlights. She'd have copper highlights mm -hmm. in her hair. Yeah. So there you or go. Or around the very edge of her There's dress. That. Like you yeah. can see the, yeah. like she has dress edging. All right. So there's that. Okay, so now this is what I also did. And you guys have seen me do these before. Where usually I get a raw brass piece and do it, but I did this over gingerbread. I really got a lot of color on there, but the gingerbread yeah. makes it deep. So it I, almost looks like it's brass yeah, now. Uh huh. It's not. <laughs> I distressed it first. You know, so you have to think, do I really want to do that, right? It might look prettier if you just do what I did on this piece of ginger light on this. I'm t kind of thinking maybe it would because it makes it rose oxy. And a lot of people said, oh, I wish you'd get rose oxy again. Well, you can do it yourself now. you got options. Anyway, I put color on this. Perfect pearls. I used lunar, right? I used, uh, lunar paste first. Oh, Wipe on, wipe off. Okay. Um, I think I use Crown Me, or maybe I'd use this. Oh, I like that one, the Crown Me. I might use it. I think I use this. Oh, Claire Skies, yeah. Yeah. So, um, anyway, first I distressed it, and then I used some lunar paste, and I wiped most of it off. I just kind of wanted to get it in the cracks to antique it. And then this darker blue, that's from a Sharpie marker. Oh. Yeah, so basically, you know, it's up to you what you do with it. And if you don't get your color on too heavy and thick and you don't seal over it first, you can wipe it off. You can scrub it off. And then is the... Start over. If it's not cured and set with a sealant on it, you can get it off and start over. Is that the the perfect gold, perfect pearls that looks like it's I looking use... like the brass? No. <laughs> That's just buffed back. You um, but that... Oh, but I did use a little bit of grape fizz, and it really, you can't really see it too much, but it's on there. Yeah, it's just, just I don't know. So, like, these, those are just really buffed back? Mm-hmm. <gasps> oh, no, wait, I'm lying. I'm lying. I did put a little of this on there. Okay. That's what I was perfect thinking. Perfect gold. I did put okay. a little of that. And with perfect pearls, you know, you have to use uh, clear embossing ink, which is this. And my supplier is not it stick. carrying it anymore, which makes me hot mad. But anyway, that's what they do. I know 
it's upsetting to you guys sometimes too when it was something I had for a long time then I don't. Well, it's because my supplier let me down then I have to let you down. I hate that. But anyway, we do have um, the flat, you know, the flat things with the... The ink pads. The ink, that's it. Ink pads, we do have those. But you have to have clear embossing ink. If you're working with metal and you want to put this stuff down, you need to cover it with clear embossing ink and then you just stick. kind of brush it on and then you kind of just mush it around with your fingers. You like it, huh, Nancy? It is pretty, isn't it? Um, and put it on, kind of move it around with your fingers. I use, that's why I got junk on my hands. Is I, <laughs> I use my hands probably more than on my paintbrush. But anyway, the back now, I do anything with that. Huh. But yes, I did get a little bit see. of some, some of this stuff in it. Oh, yeah, I use a little bit of this, too. Lunar paste. They call it Psych. S-I-K-E. Exclamation mark. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> anyway, it's kind of a <laughs> green, green gold. Yeah. But anyway, um, I might put some on or I might just seal it like that. Leave it alone. But, yeah, can you believe that this is the same piece, like front and back? That's, That's why I'm saying maybe I you mean, want to put a little bit of something on the back. But see, I, I got a little bit of this stuff here, and I'll have to get that out. It comes out, you see. It's mm -hmm. coming out. Okay. So I'll decide if it really matters or not. You know. I'm Or if I end up looking at this for a day or so, I don't really like it. Maybe I want to put a little more color in there or something. I don't know. Depends. You know what it depends to me is when I go look to see what kind of beads I have. And if I don't have quite the right beads and I don't want to order them at that point in time, then I might change it up a little bit so that it'll go with a bead I have. And I'm sure you guys have done that too. So, and on this one, I like this piece too because there is a hole drilled right here. So there's no holes like drilled up here. No drills held up here, but you can easily just get a jump through there and, you know, hang, mm -hmm. chain or whatever. But here, yeah, you can put a tassel on this. You know me, I love to balance my pieces with something hanging below, so you can do that. Um, this is another piece that I've used a lot of times. You guys have seen me use this numerous, numerous times um, in colorization videos because it works out really mm -hmm. good. You have to drill this one or else get little, like you get these little tabs like I use, the little connector bits here. You could glue those on if you wanted. Mm -hmm. I used to get from the Padidly Links, you remember the Padidly Links company? It was Charm Jewelry. And they would have a sample sale every year. And I knew the sales rep over in Rhode Island. And his wife always went to it and she would get me stuff. And... Just little parts they weren't using anymore and that. Most of them were French. They didn't have a lot of U.S. It was mostly French. But they would solder stuff like this on the back rather than drilling stuff. I don't know why. They just did. They soldered it on. And I don't know that it made a better finish. But then it would look like this. And you see these little tabs. See that? So you could, you could do that. You totally could do that. And it would be fine. Um, I don't know if I put it on the top. No, that doesn't really work if you put it on top. So I have to go under. So here you need three. You need three. And then see, you got one there too. Mm -hmm. But what I like is when you do that, you have this finished piece on the back, and I just think it looks a little nicer. So you could do that for holes too if you don't want to drill it. I've always drilled it, but you know, hey, nothing wrong with this either. This would be great. So. Um, yeah, this one is so, so fun to distress and so, mm -hmm. so fun to add color to it. And, you know, do it. if you want to flip back, I think Javi once made me a playlist of colorization videos. So you can find, go look for my playlist, you'll find it. And it shows so many ways to use color on brass stampings. Or, you know, we've done I've done it. a few, too. We've done this, have you? Yeah. Yeah, you did that blue with, heart. Yeah, with the matte yeah, black. Yeah, so you... Um, could go back and look through those and you'll see all kinds of ideas of things that you can do with your stampings and putting colors. Yes, I know you do. Yes, you have lots of little pieces. Nancy used to get lots and lots of stuff. Now she's going to start making some stuff, right, Nancy? <laughs> we have some nice um, vintage uh, uh, copper chain, too. That rope style chain that would probably that look. That gingerbread chain. That would look really nice with if our If any of you guys asked me for that, we did some 
bumper and gingerbread chain. I can't remember what. Oh, we did it in metals, the metals video a few weeks ago when we were explaining different metals. Mm -hmm. And I said, I have, excuse me, crap ton of that stuff. Uh huh. So um, if anybody wants a piece of that to play with, ask me because you can buff it out to have highlights like this too and go with it. It's but, beautiful yeah, chain. But and it's and you but you would have to seal it because when you do that, the whole reason it's copper is because that is steel chain and nothing wrong with that either. I used to say don't buy the other one. It's because if you don't prepare steel right, and this is in that video, it rusts. Well with that copper coat on it, that's what they do. It's an undercoat that goes in between the steel and whatever they paint it. And it plates up like a dream. It is mm -hmm. gorgeous. And it stays. Right. But the copper coat is a plating too. It's like a matte copper. So if you distress that, what you're doing is you're distressing back to the steel. And now you're exposing it to weather and humidity and stuff. So you would have to seal it. So you could, you could just, you know, distress it, make it look how you want. And then what do you do to seal it? Well, this is a pain. Well, you could spray it with Krylon, but what I like most of all is the matte Swelligan, which is not Swelligan anymore. Well, the brand still exists, it does, but it's really Sculpt Nouveau. And that's when it's really good to use, if you like to do chain, this really works super good. And I have it in matte too. So it will just stay looking exactly how you did it. I don't have a ton of this stuff. I only ordered like five, six bottles to see if it would go over. And so far, um, some of it has sold pretty good, but it's not sold out. And I think maybe it's just more than people want. I just, you know what? I could buy it in a big, big jug and I could bottle it, you know, into small containers. Um, but then I would have to have certain labeling on it, which I could do. I wouldn't call it swelling and that's not my name. I'd probably just ask Sculpt Nouveau if I'd be allowed to use their um, logo and put it on her. You know, I don't know. I don't want to go in competition with this elegant line. You know, I've loved it. I've always loved it. I still love it. Um, but for me to get that and put it in small bottles, I'd have to bottle it. And, you know, it's not toxic, so I could. You know, I don't sell tons of it anyway, but I have the spray ones for now. So if anybody wants to get it, they're at the website. So anyway, I hope you guys like this. I hope you enjoyed the program. Our hour is up. Karen oh, says she loves she that loves chain, it. So by did the I way. send you a piece? I thought I was going to. Karen. I think she went and ordered some too. Did she it did. come, Karen? Isn't it beautiful? I think in I person? told Jordan to send her piece. I don't know if he did. Yeah. You just tell him to send you another one. How's that? Now this is what's cool. I'm going to show you this real quick. Now this is matte black, and matte black has a slight not shine really. A slight reminds me of jet. Oh, I just put her up on our Etsy shop yeah. today. Now, you could distress her because it's hard to see the detail here, but when I'm looking, I see it. And I could take her and I could put her in this, you know, and then fold the tabs over and make her hang. I put those X-shaped filigrees on Etsy, this, too. This, yeah, this would make uh, fantastic what they call morning jewelry, all black. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's why I didn't distress her because I'm thinking maybe I would do a piece like that. Um, but she does have the Art Nouveau undulating line, so you could make her a Regency style jewelry, but she wouldn't really be Is Regency. morning jewelry M -O -U considered? M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, Is that considered Regency? There was morning jewelry since going way, way back. Okay. It was in lots of, going way, way, way back. But who really, really popularized it was Queen Victoria because when Prince Albert died, all she did was mourn the rest of her life. Oh. She was a drama queen. I don't know <laughs> if you know that. She was a drama queen. So, anyway. Did you know that all the royals back in the time of Victoria and then going forward a little bit, even to that uh, king who abdicated for the woman he loved, Wallace Simpson, they all spoke fluent German. Did you know that? All of them. And the reason they well, spoke English too, but the reason they spoke German is because their family line, you know how the different royal uh, houses across Europe would intermarry to make, you know, political alliances, alliances and stuff? Alliances, yeah. Yeah. Well, somebody married in at some point that was German and it just affected all the ones that came after and they all spoke German. I found that very fascinating. I didn't know that. Hmm. 
that they spoke German in the castle sometimes. Now, a lot of the, the royal, you know, court and that, they, they would speak French because that was the cool language. I mean, in you Russia, know. in Russia, when they had uh, the czar and all that, you know, uh, they spoke French. Well, personally, German's not very romantic sounding. Well, <laughs> you know, what it was, it's like, you know, they're going to have to get over, like, uh, the guy, it was King George, he was a King George. Um, who abdicated, I mean, he made friends with Hitler. Oh, and he went to see Hitler, and he was all thrilled because he could speak German. It's like, man, buddy, you're going to have to get over that. <laughs> because he was, you know, he was an um, English subject, you know. So anyway, and they were against Hitler. But anyway, just interesting. Though, you learn When you learn about jewelry, you learn a lot about history, history. in general. Plus... I become a YouTube addict. I watch YouTube all the time. I love the history type presentations they made. I've watched all kinds of stuff. And then I watch all these um, videos about language too. And there was one, I'll just leave you with this little tidbit and then we'll have to take off for today. There was one that said, what is the language that's out there and all the language? Of course, English is a Germanic language. Okay, has your Germanic root. You'd have to look that up, but it does. Anyways, so it said, what language out there is structured and is the most like English? And I'm like, uh, I wasn't aware there was one. I mean, of course, you know, you could have different accents, like all over UK, there's a Welsh accent, you know, there's a South London accent, there's a Midlands accent, there's a northern and you know just every little hamlet in town has their own accent in uk but um so there's that but that's an accent that's not a language so said number one language that's closest to english is a language called scots not scotch it's scots s-c-o-t-s and scottish people some of them not all speak it and it is it is a language as based on not gaelic i think it's gallic and that's another. So it's not just an accent. Type thing. It's an actual no, language. No, it's a language. Huh. But they say that if you listen very closely, you probably get most of it. I don't know. I haven't, so I don't know. It would be interesting. But then after that, they said there's really a, a another language that runs neck and neck with Scots, as for being a Germanic language, most like English, and it is a language called West Frisian which I had never in my life heard of, West Frisian. What's that? What is West Frisian? So I'm looking, looking, looking. People in the Netherlands, some of them, not all of them, speak West Frisian. Hmm. So then it showed what it looked like. And I'm like, I don't know why you're saying <laughs> I don't see it. I don't see it anywhere. I don't see any pattern. I don't see. But anyway, that's what they said. So that's your tidbit for today. In fact, I gave, <laughs> I gave you a lot of them, like Queen Victoria spoke German. Yeah. Anyway, so she spoke English, too. Anyway, thank you, German, French, and Italian. Yeah, French and Italian. Italian are the romantic French and, languages. Yeah, French and Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, and Romanian are, are uh, romance languages. And I'm, I'm kind of, uh, I'm good with those. They're the easiest Which ones Which French and Italian, me. I mean, they're very similar. French, French I know, like, so. Bocuse of words, and I can't say it, but Italian I can read, and I can read it aloud and not sound stupid, you know. Um, Portuguese I can do pretty well, because um, I started learning when I was young, but nobody speaks it, so I have no, I mean, be better to do Italian, there's people who speak Well, that. Italian, you probably get the Italian because of Spanish, right? Aren't Italian you know, and Spanish like, close? Uh, Portuguese isn't closest to Spanish. Portuguese is after that Italian. No, okay. But the reason I got the Italian is now here's another thing about BC you might not know. When I was a young girl, I liked to sing and I was trained. I don't sing anymore at all. Don't ask me. It's it's crummy. I can't do it anymore. I lost my voice. But anyway, back then I had a decent voice and I trained. And when you take formal training, you learn to sing in, in Italian. Italian, number one. Because opera. Then you learn to sing in German, and that's a hoot. I really? love I love singing in German because it just had those sounds, you know. But first you sing to, learn to sing in Italian, so all the open vowel sounds like Pavarotti. And then you sing German, which I, I don't know what I was saying, but I, I learned I could read it out loud, you know, but... 
I have a weird accent, but anyway, I could. And then Italian, Italian. So I learned a lot of Italian there, and it was close to uh, Spanish. So yeah, I can read it out loud, and I understand most of it. You know, French. I learned. I had learned a little bit of that too, but I was not good at it at all, at all. Even though I know a lot of phrases and I can recognize things, but I can't say it. I just, I'm lost. But Italian I could do, <laughs> Portuguese I could do, Spanish, that's my language. That's the one I struggled with my whole life and I do it okay. Um, and then there's English, which I struggle with my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I do it okay. But anyway, that's that's all that for now. That doesn't have anything Andrew, to do with Andrew says, that's so much for today's video. <laughs> Isn't it? Thanks. She says, thanks so much for today's video. Well, are you sure? Wait. Oh, Melissa, your rel relatives speak Welsh. It's terrifying. Yes. Do you know Denise Masters, who's in our group, she's Welsh. And she told me the whole story oh, of that. why the Welsh language is almost unknown now. Only the old people know it is because the queen outlawed it, didn't want the children learning it. And that's something. But here's another tidbit for you. My last name, Lansdowne, L-A-N-S-D-O-W-N-E, is Welsh 100%, and it's the correct spelling of it, too. Yeah. But I can't say any of it. I don't know anything about it. Okay, listen. Oh, Thanks, you, no, you, you will never, ever hear me singing because I can't do it. I remember how, but I can't. Kind of like Linda Ronstadt, she used to be able to sing. I, well, I was never good like her, but I'm just saying. She used to be able to sing. I used to be able to sing. Can't do it anymore for different reasons. Well, thanks a lot. Those pieces of gorgeous. I think, to, I think so, too, Melissa. I, I, yeah. <laughs> just took you down the primitive. Languages. There goes the ADHD girl just going on down the primitive path. But anyway. History, languages, jewelry. Yeah, but with jewelry, you learn a lot about we, history. A lot, lot, lot about history. And I love that. So, anyway, so let's get through the Regency period. And thanks for watching. She says she's enjoyed it. She's covered up the stage, but I'll get back as soon as I can. Thank you. Thank you too, Lauren. Oh, Aw, thank you, you're, Pamela. You're very welcome. And Dara, you too. You're always got my back, and I appreciate it. All of this can be found uh, in stock, bsubateeks.com. Yes. And some of it is also on Etsy as well. I've yeah. been loading. So if Just anybody has been watching along this whole hour and doesn't know what these are or where you get them, get them at www.bsubateeks.com. And please don't forget, subscribe if you haven't. Like the video and say something nice to me under the video because once you, it's posted, YouTube looks at that and our rank goes up not only for our videos but for our website, for our blog, anything that can create a bank backlink. It helps everything. So you wouldn't think, oh, that's just such a small thing. It's not a small thing to me because it's something I can't do for myself. So I really appreciate that. Yep. Okay, enough said. You guys have a great day. And I'll see you at the creative group probably before you know it. Yep, okay? I'm going to put up a reel um, this week with yeah. some more of our gingerbread and our matte and black and to and show are you off. you doing a video? I could probably do a video. On, uh, on Thursday? Maybe you could show maybe them. Maybe Thursday? Maybe you could show them some of the other pieces your mom put up or okay. something. Yeah. You guys want me on Thursday? I can get on Thursday afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Alrighty. If she doesn't, maybe I will and tell you more about Regency. I don't know. We'll see. But we're doing a lot of videos. Yeah. Now. So anyway, we love you.